Hello and welcome to the Joint Operations Training Ground, Joint Terminal Attack Controller Certification Course. This video lesson is meant for those who have already attended the course and need a refresher, or for those who will not be attending a live course. If you will be attending a certification course in the future, please disregard this video as the following information will be given again at that time. Lesson 1. Familiarization and Use of Advanced Radios This lesson will cover the use of radio add-ons such as Acre and Task Force Arrowhead Radio. Due to the radio systems being subject to change, this lesson will not be covered in this video and will only be given during the live course. One thing I would like to touch on, however, is radio frequencies as it pertains to AOs with multiple JTACs. In some instances, there may be several teams with JTACs operating at the same AO. When this occurs, the ground commander will establish individual frequencies and channel numbers for each JTAC, as well as an air command frequency that will be used by all JTAC and CAS aircraft. The air command channel will act as a sort of lobby, where information that is vital for all JTAC and CAS pilots will be passed. This information includes aircraft check-in and check-out, as well as the establishment and movement of initial points, battle positions, and holding areas. Once a JTAC has a CAS mission ready, he will notify the pilot in the air command frequency that he has tasking available. When the pilot acknowledges that they are available for tasking, the JTAC will give his channel number and both parties will move to that frequency. After the mission is complete, the JTAC will clear the pilot from the mission and both parties will return to the air command channel. The CAS pilot will then notify that frequency that he is back on station minus the ordinance used during the mission. An example would be Wolf 1-6, back on station, minus 2 times GBU-12s. This will update all JTACs on the aircraft and ordinance available to them. Lesson 2, JTAC Responsibilities on the Battlefield. In the field, a JTAC is responsible for a lot more than just marking targets for CAS missions. They are required to know what assets they have available to them at all times, the ordinance they are carrying, and the best use of said ordinance. It is their responsibility after an aircraft has checked in with them to closely monitor the battlefield around them and make recommendations to team leaders and the chain of command for the use of those assets. Commanding their team, coordinating with other ground elements, completing objectives, engaging the enemy, and keeping their men alive are just a few of the things a team leader is doing at any given moment in the field. They may oftentimes forget they have an F-18 on standby to support them. That's why it is the JTAC's responsibility to remind them when the need arises. For example, if the team comes to the crest of a hill and observes an enemy armor piece 400 meters away and the team leader calls up the AT riflemen to engage, it is the JTAC's responsibility to inform the team leader that there is an F-18 on station with three remaining GBU-12s. Since the armor isn't an immediate threat, the team leader would belay his last and authorize a cast mission. The JTAC must also maintain positive control of the combat aircraft under their charge from the time they check in until the time they are cleared to depart. It is their responsibility to ensure there are no mid-air collisions or fratricide at any time. Controlling aircraft and avoiding mid-air collisions is accomplished through the use of IPs, BPs, HAs, and proper mission planning. Avoiding fratricide is accomplished through good communication between pilot and JTAC, and the JTAC visually acquiring target and attacking aircraft on Type 1 Danger Close missions before clearing hot. It is also the responsibility of the JTAC to prioritize the preservation of allied and civilian life over that of target elimination. This means that when making cast missions and observing inbound aircraft, ensure that friendly forces and civilians are never injured as a direct result of ordnance delivery. This also means that in a target-rich environment, engage those targets that pose the greatest risk to allied forces first. Also, the JTAC should know the capabilities of the pilots under their charge and attempt to never give them a mission they are unable to complete safely, such as sending a nugget on a danger-close gun run. For example, if you have an A-10 inbound on an APC for a GBU-12 strike, and the vehicle moves within bomb blast radius of friendly forces, the JTAC will call an abort, or a switch of weapon to an AGM, or if the pilot is a veteran, then possibly a gun run. Another example would be, if you have a team being pinned down by three to four shooters, concealed in a group of trees with low bushes 100 meters away, and a group of 15 enemies patrolling on a hill 700 meters away, the JTAC would call a rocket or gun run on the three to four shooters first, as the patrol on the hill isn't an immediate threat. Lesson 3. Aircraft check-in and establishing initial points, battle positions, and holding areas. All CAS aircraft upon entering operational airspace will check in with the current JTAC. This is to keep the JTAC informed of the number and type of aircraft and ordnance available to him. During the check-in process, information is passed between the flight lead of the checking in element and the JTAC. The flight lead will make contact with the JTAC and inform him that he has aircraft ready to check in. Once the JTAC is ready to copy down the check-in info, he will give the go-ahead. The pilot will then pass along the following information. The number and type of aircraft, i.e. 1A10C, their position and altitude, 
This can be given as a grid coordinate, preset marker, or landmark relation. Their ordinates, if equipped with the default loadout for that aircraft, they will simply say default. If anything other than default, they will specify the type and count of ground attack munitions. Time on station. This is the time they would be available for tasking. Abort code. A custom abort code can be chosen by the flight lead. The default code is abort. Remarks. Any remarks the pilot may have. The abort code and remarks section of the check-in are optional. Prior to aircraft check-in or immediately after, the JTAC should establish an initial point, battle position, or holding area depending on the type of aircraft and current situation. An initial point, hereafter referred to as IP, is used for fixed-wing aircraft only. There are locations on the map that serve as anchor points for fixed-wing aircraft to loiter while awaiting tasking and are also the locations they begin cast missions from. They can be set up prior to the start of or during an operation. IPs, like all points, can be moved or created at any time by a JTAC for operational or safety reasons. And like all points, there may be multiple on the map at any time. Depending on the terrain, type of aircraft, and threats in the area, the IP should be between 2,000 and 4,000 meters away from the target area. A battle position, hereafter referred to as BP, is used for rotary wing aircraft only. They are locations close to the AO where rotary wing aircraft can hide behind terrain and pop up on request to engage enemy ground forces. They are established within 2,000 meters of the AO. A holding area, hereafter referred to as HA, is used for rotary wing aircraft only. They are locations where rotary wing aircraft can loiter safely away from the AO while awaiting tasking. Due to the unique advantages of rotary wing aircraft, in some situations no points will be required for these assets. When creating or updating points, there are several factors you should take into consideration, like the type of aircraft, threats in the area, terrain, friendly locations, weather, position of the sun, and pilot skill. These may not apply to all situations, and from time to time you may find other things you have to account for when establishing points. When you are looking for locations, think of your pilot. Will he be safe at this location? And will he be able to attack from this location with good visibility? And will he have to worry about hitting friendlies on his attack runs? We will now discuss how to create and update the aforementioned positions. A JTAC should avoid creating markers on the map in global, side, or group chat. These points should only be marked in vehicle or direct chat and be passed to other elements via the radio using six or eight digit grid square coordinates or bulls calls. This will keep the global map from being cluttered by points that only pertain to a few and help avoid markers from being accidentally removed. When playing in a mission with no possibility of the enemy intercepting communications, a six or eight grid coordinate update is fine. The grid reference will be given from the JTAC to the pilot, and the pilot will place a marker on his map in vehicle chat with the appropriate name. When using a six-digit grid coordinate, the mark will be placed on the X formed by the grid square lines in the southwest corner of the square. If playing against human enemies who may have compromised your communications, a bull's call should be used for point updating, because if they hear a six-digit HA update, they simply have to go to that location and shoot down your bird. Bulls calls can be used for securely transmitting any coordinates, such as LZs, friendly troop locations, and target data. At this time, there are currently no map tools for Armor 3 that facilitate proper bulls calls. I will, however, still cover this topic as I hope that BI or Armada will release adequate tools in the near future. For the time being, I will use Armor 2 to cover this section. A bulls call is a bearing and range from the bull's eye. The bull's eye is a marker placed on the map in side chat by the ground commander at the start of the mission. It is a point of reference for all friendly units on the map. It is used to give secure location data across a possibly compromised net. Although not recommended, the bullseye location can be changed during the mission if it is believed to have been compromised. The ground commander is the only one authorized to change the location of the bullseye. A bulls call will always be passed from one party to another in the following format. The word bulls, followed by the bearing, the word for, then the range. To make or decipher a bull's call, you must first have map tools that include a 360 degree protractor and a ruler with distance measurements. To make a call, place the center of your protractor and the starting position of your ruler over the bullseye. Move your ruler so that it passes over the point you are making the call for. The degree your ruler passes the protractor at is your bearing and the distance your point is at on the ruler is your range. You would then pass this bearing and range data to the pilot in a bull's call. For example,
To decipher the call, you would place your protractor center and ruler starting point over the bullseye. You would then move your ruler to the degree on the protractor given in the bull's call. Then you just have to follow the ruler out to the distance given and place your marker in vehicle chat. This concludes part one of the Joint Terminal Attack Controller Certification course. Please see part two for the continuation.